Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. So today guys jumping right into this, I am going to show you how to get a virtual machine going on your computer. We have all heard about virtual machine this, virtual machine that. A lot of you may have been wondering what in the world is a virtual machine. Um, so today I'm going to show you how to set up a virtual machine on your Windows computer. So first thing I need you to do is go to this website here. The link is down in the description below, and this will help you download Oracle uh, VirtualBox that we install the operating system into. So once you get to this page here, you're just gonna click on the Windows hosts here. And once you do that, just save the file or run it. However you do it on your machine, I have mine set up a little bit different. Um, once you get that downloaded, I want you to go over to this site here, and uh, this is where you download Windows 10. We're just going to go with Windows 10. Cannot do virtual uh, machine for Windows 11 just because of the TPM requirements on that. Um, and I'm sure there's ways around that. Um, I have not um, even tried to figure that out. So we're just going to go with a Windows 10 virtual machine today. Uh, so once you get to this page, again, link in the description below, you will scroll down here. And you're going to download the uh, media installation tool. And um, I'll show you how to do that part um, because we need to get an ISO image out of this. So let's go ahead and save the media creation tool. It already exists on my desktop. Um, so go ahead and get that going. Um, and once you get all that stuff going, guys, um, we will run this here. So once you open the media creation tool here, it's going to just gather some basic everyday information uh, that it needs to uh, needs to create this. And it shouldn't take too long. But we'll let it do its thing. Here we go. Uh, make sure you read all of this. I'm just kidding. Let's scroll down and accept that. It will continue on, and I believe it gathers a little bit of information about the system that you are on here as well. So let's, that, let's let that do its thing. Okay, and then what do you want to do? So you can upgrade this PC, but we don't want to do that. We want to create installation media. And right here you see USB flash drive, DVD, or ISO file. That is what we are going for is the ISO file which as you see, I've already created here, uh, but for sake of just showing you this, we're gonna go through it. Uh, so we're gonna click next. Um, by default, this reads your system that you're on. And most of the time, that this is just gonna be just fine. So you can just leave those defaults, keep that checked as recommended options and click next. And this is where we need to make that move. So we're gonna choose ISO file and we're gonna do next. And then it's going to ask you to save it somewhere. So I want you to go ahead and do that on your system. As you can see, it's already here on mine right there. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that out now. And I'm going to close this out. But for you, continue to do that. And you will get the ISO file on your desktop there. Now let's go back to um, the Oracle VM. So go ahead. And I know you already downloaded that, but get that installed. And once that is installed, we're gonna open it up. And once you do, you should be presented with a screen like this. And so from this point, it's actually pretty simple. So we're gonna just click on new here because we're creating a new VM and we're gonna give it a name. So I'm gonna give it the name of Windows 10. If I can learn how to type. And I'm gonna put VM at the end for virtual machine. And it's going to say, okay, where do you want this at? So um, this file path for me is fine. Um, not a problem. And it's asking for the ISO image. So let's go ahead and grab that. As we can see, it's right here. If it's not there, you just hit browse. It's already here because I messed with this earlier. So that's where my ISO file is. Um, we're going to choose this to skip unattended uh, installation. Um, that is for other stuff and gas and stuff like that. So just skip unattended and then we're just going to get next on this. Now, this is where you designate the resources to your virtual machine. And by that, I mean your memory and processors. So basically, 
just think of just think of a computer and it's like um you know you're getting a new computer and it has this amount of ram or memory and you know uh this many cpu cores um so you probably don't want to throw as much as you can at it unless you're going to use it a lot or use it for primary computing um, if you're just going to use it for different various stuff i use mine for testing different things and stuff like that so i don't affect my regular operating system so in here i would just go with um let's just go with 81 92 meg and for processors let's just do two cores and that's pretty good enough for what we're going to be doing here and once you get that set we're going to hit next um and then it's going to ask you to create a virtual hard disk don't need my hard disk to be that big because again i'm not going to be doing much on it other than just testing some stuff so i'm going to leave it at 50 gig for the 50 gig hard drive all this other stuff you can just kind of leave default you don't need to mess with that and then we're going to click next on that then this kind of gives a summary of what we're doing here your memory your core processors uh, disk size etc etc and then we're just going to finish that up now once you finish that up you see that you have now have this populated here in here and it is what you named it your windows 10 vm and it is powered off now to power that on you simply come in here and you click start now once we do this oracle will kick in a screen will pop up and that is your virtual box which will run your virtual machine and this will take a few minutes to get um to get set up it's it's just like when you get a new computer you got to set up windows and stuff like that so this is no exception it's going to be kind of the same thing here um so yep all these default is fine with me we're going to next that and we're going to tell it install and like I said, this will go through installation just like you're installing Windows for the first time on a computer. Um, so at this point, if you have a Windows product key, if you're going to be using this uh, to the fullest extent, you have a Windows product key, you can definitely enter it here and it will register the product key and, and work just fine. For me, like I said, I just use it as a sandbox test machine. I don't really need Windows to be fully activated, so I'm just gonna click, I don't have a product key, at which point it will let you continue. Um, I'm going to choose, you choose whatever one you want, but I'm gonna choose Windows 10 Pro, and we're gonna go next on this. And all the normal stuff that goes along with installing Windows, uh, this is not gonna be an upgrade, we're gonna do a fresh install. And that is the drive that we selected. If you remember from earlier, we'll do 50 gigs. So that is what is selected. We're going to next on that. And this is the point, just like when you install on a regular computer that it's gonna go through and grab everything it needs. So we're gonna give it the time to do that and we will continue when that is done. Okay, guys, and as you see, this is at the point where it is restarting, doing a little countdown. You, click, you can click restart there if you want to hurry that up a little bit. And so at this point, it's going to restart just like Windows would restart if you're installing it on a new system. Right, starting services, getting everything ready. I will say this is so much quicker than back in the day with like Windows 95, Windows 98, stuff like that. Even Windows 7, Windows 10 seems to install a lot quicker, um, especially if you have like a solid state drive. If you're still installing them on a mechanical drive, it's still going to take a little bit of time, but pretty much in today's day and age with modern technology, and up-to-date hardware. You're pretty good to go with this stuff. Okay, and another restart after, quote, getting everything ready here.
and at any point it should definitely pop us right into Windows 10. Now keep in mind when you do get into Windows 10, uh, you will, uh, if you must, if you need to, you, you will have to do the Windows updates and stuff like that, just like you would on a regular Windows system. Uh, like I said, if you're just using a test environment to run some software or whatever, it might not be necessary, but just keep in mind some updates do install some little bits of software that are required to make things work a little bit better. All right, so here we are with the setup. We're definitely in the United States. Let me maximize this. Um, yes, US. And yes, correct keyboard layout. No, I do not want a second keyboard layout. And I'll have some important setup to do. Okay, and we're just going to choose setup for personal use. And most of this stuff that we can skip here, we don't want to sign in or I don't want to sign in with a Microsoft account. You're more than welcome to if you'd like, but I'm just going to say, hey, let's just use an offline account. And I don't really want to do any of this, so I'm going to continue with limited experience. And who's going to use this? This is me. I'm going to go next. I'm not going to bother to put in a password on this. And I'll just next on that. And generally, I recommend turning all this stuff off. Um, so we're just going to take a second here to do that. And we're going to accept that. And yeah, let's just skip all this fun junk. And not now. I don't really like Cortana. And here's our new operating system saying hi to us. Okay, guys, and as you can see, that Windows installation finished, and we are in here now. Now, one thing you will notice, and it's going to depend on your monitor uh, resolution and stuff like this. This might be a little bit smaller. Uh, you can actually uh, go up here to view and do uh, full screen, which is host F. And by the way, the host key is your right control key. That's what's set right now. But let's just do uh, full screen. And you're still going to, you know, get it small, but it's going to open up a little wider around there. Um, and again, you can mess with the resolutions in here. If you go to display settings, um, let's actually move this to 16 by 1200. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. 1280. Okay, let's do that. And that way I can at least see my start button down here and everything. So that is all there is to setting that up, guys. And let me show you here if we go in and we shut down the machine, just like you would a regular machine. And I will show you that it shuts down and we will start from scratch as far as going into the Oracle VM. And we will go ahead and launch that again. My Oracle's already open. Our machine's powered off. Let's start that thing up. And we don't need to go through the install or anything like that. It's just going to go ahead and uh, boot into Windows for us. And there is your Windows 10 logo. All right, and as you can see, right into Windows 10 here. And you can close these on the side too, to kind of free that up. 
Um, but once you get in here, yeah, you will have um, internet access the whole shot. It uses the hardware off of your system, so you will have a network connection. And it's, uh, it's a nice little way to have just like a, quote, test machine or, you know, stuff like that. So anyway, guys, that is all I have for you today on how to set up your very own VM. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down in the comments below. And if this helped you out at all, if this helped you set up a VM, toss me a like if you would please and consider subscribing. I um, have new videos come out every week, at least two or three weekly. So thanks guys, appreciate it. Have a good day.